Okay. It's the time's now 6.03. Um, we'll start, we will begin this virtual town hall meeting. Um, Taylor Carpenter is going to be letting people in and in the room and he'll be monitoring the chat box, but uh, let's begin. All right. So before we begin, we're going to do some introductions and um, um, there's going to be three of us that's going to be hosting this tonight. Um, the first one, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Lieutenant Kung Fan, pronounced Kung, like Kung Fu, hold the Fu. Uh, 46 years of my name being mispronounced is the best way to uh, explain it to people. I see a lot of smiles in there because they can, they probably relate with me. So I'm currently assigned to our Administrative Services Program uh, Division. I oversee a lot of the contracts, community events, and I'm also a public information officer. Uh, with the, as a public information officer, um, when you get those Nixle and those press releases, that's going to be my signature on those all. So we also have um, community service officer Taylor Carpenter. He is in our community services unit. You may be familiar with Taylor in all of our community events and outreach programs that we do for our community. Uh, we're the ones who hosts it in the um, evening hours for each respective neighborhood. He's going to be monitoring the chat box tonight, allowing people in and out. And then I'll let John introduce himself. Hey, everyone. I'm John Anderson with Fox Safety. Uh, I've been working with Kung for a little while, working on getting the uh, these solutions put together for you all. And I appreciate you having me here to talk with you for a little bit. Uh, I'm our Northern California Territory Manager for all of our law enforcement agencies here in the area. And I also see in our chat room, we have uh, council member Kathy watt Nabi in here. Thank you, um, council member, always a pleasure. And I also see, I believe I see assist, our assistant chief, um, Wahid Kazem in here as well. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and begin. Um, one of the things, oh, I'm sorry, real quick, um, before we start, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, I think we're all familiar with Zoom now. I'm still dealing it with my kids at home uh, with some of the school stuff, but just for um, out of respect for each other in this meeting, just a couple housekeeping rules. If we can just keep ourselves on mute, um, save questions till the end, because I believe John and I worked on this um, presentation and I think we're gonna cover pretty much every questions that you may have. So if you can just hold on to the questions in the end, or if you wanna jot it down before you forget, we have a chat room that's being monitored by Taylor. And uh, aside from that, that's pretty much it. So tonight, the question is why are we here tonight? And why was it important for the Santa Clara Police Department to have a virtual town hall meeting on a technology that we've been using in the past? The reason why we're here today is to discuss the addition of stationary ALPRs automated license plate readers. So we're, we're gonna say ALPRs because it's just a lot easier. If you try to say that five times fast, you're gonna get tongue tied. So when I refer to ALPR, that's what it means. So we're, so we're, um, we're here to discuss the addition of stationary ALPRs to our current mobile, mobile ALPR fleet that we've been using for approximately 15 years here in Santa Clara. We want input and collaboration on how the ALPR policy will be updated with the addition of our stationary eight ALPRs. We're gonna address any privacy issue concerns and ex explain how stationary ALPRs will benefit the community by adding another tool to help solve crimes, impact criminal activity, and make our community safer. We will also talk about the data retention and data release. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Um, John, do you have these, the slide with the uh, sitting in it? So just before we, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about Santa Clara. So as residents of Santa Clara, you know, we're, we're still a medium sized city. We're not as big as San Jose, but, but we're not as small as my hometown of Morgan Hill. Um, Santa Clara is still, it's 19.3 it's square miles from border to border. Our population, according to the census, is 132,925, and that's our residents. But you all know when we have um, our workforce in the city, Monday through Friday, 
or a stadium event, this population can swell into the million, easily into the million, with the stadium itself in the in the 50 to 60,000 population range. So that 132,000 um, population is just those residents that live in this town. We are authorized for 159 sworn officers. And just to kind of explain what happens when, when um, the police are out on the street and doing patrol, what happens with the call for service? There's two ways that we do it. One, our officers self-initiates a an offense or a contact, and they and they are the ones who start and create that investigation. That can range from a citation or just a friendly hello and a friendly goodbye. And then also is a call for service, which is a call to 911, where where you, our community member, calls into our public safety dispatch um, center and you report a crime or suspicious activity. And our officers respond to investigate if a crime has occurred or not. And what and what we're doing, um, what we're doing now is what we have on our cars right now is the ALPRs. And does anyone, if anyone, again, if anyone has questions, please go ahead and put it in the chat box. Or if I'm speaking too fast, please let me know. But um, for the ALPR system, one of the tools, like an officer, we have a tool belt. And on our belt, we have handcuffs. Sometimes we have, we have pepper spray, a baton. We have a radio, our lifeline, and we have our defensive weapons. What it is, it's a tool for us. It's just a single tool that we use to help us investigate and to keep our community safe. So what an ALPR is, it is also another tool. It's an investigative tool. And our ALPR system is, this, um, John, would you go to the next slide real quick, buddy? Um, here, you're going to see a picture of our ALPR system. I'm just going to explain to you real quick what it does, what we do with it, and what our current technology allows us to do with, with the ALP, ALPRs. Again, we've had this technology for over 15 years in Santa Clara, and we've been actively using it. But for those who aren't familiar with this technology, I want to explain it to you real quick. It's a system of cameras with supporting software and server engines that capture license plate information. And it instantly compares the plate number to a California Department of Justice database. And this database, database has wanted criminals or persons of interest. The cameras scan thousands of license plate in the same amount of time it takes an actual person to scan a few license plate. When a license plate image is compared against a list of wanted vehicles and matched to the um, Department of Justice databases, then an alert is signaled and the screen shows the vehicle and the reason for the alert, such as a crime, a missing person, or an ongoing investigation. The ALPRs automatically provide the location, date, time, and a photograph of the license plate. The data is then uploaded to a server, and the ALPRs, they're small, easy to maneuver, and typically mounted on our, on, right now, mounted to our police vehicles. And ARPRs are commonly used in both public and private sectors, including law enforcement, HOAs, apartment complexes, gas stations, parking managed companies, et cetera. And I've actually just read somewhere that they've there was a city that was attaching them to the, the garbage trucks because the garbage trucks would just drive and they would capture the data as they do their, their weekly or their daily routes. So that was pretty interesting. And then we'll go to the next slide, which is our current ALPR system. Um, currently, the Santa Clara Police Department currently has four ALPRs. They are attached to four police vehicles. These vehicles capture license plate data as officers drive them throughout the city, responding to calls for service and fulfilling, fulfilling their other responsibilities to the community. Station ALPRs can consistently capture license plate data at one location and have a much greater impact at specific crime trend areas. It has become a common practice in many Bay Area communities for departments to use ALPR technology. And this is gonna help us capture criminals which impacts crime trends. And sometimes police agencies stop criminals before they can even commit other crimes in, a, in, our, in our neighborhood in Santa Clara. And, and our next slide is just, um, I'll tell you how the system works again. I know there's a lot, it's very technical but I just want to kind of give you a broad overview of how the system works, okay? And how the system works is that officers have to log on to the current ALPR system. That is, an officer has to have their own unique user ID. They have to have their own password, 
They have to log in to, to let us know they are using this technology. And it creates an audit trail regarding their use and information that they viewed. As vehicles pass by the ALPR cameras, officers will only receive alerts on wanted vehicles. And these alerts include the GPS location, date time of the ALPR read, and an image of the license plate and the image of the vehicle. This provides an officer an opportunity to verify if the plate information is correct before taking any enforcement action, if any at all. But the mobile and stationary system will provide us an instant notification to our personnel working, and it will allow for immediate follow-up, which could include locating a stolen vehicle, a felony vehicle, or a missing loved one, to name a few. The ALPR database will also offer the ability to search partial plates and vehicle descriptions to conduct follow-up investigations and possibly identify suspects to clear cases. The database is used to help identify suspects, which will assist the police department in lowering crime rates and increasing the possibility to make an arrest. And the, the utilization of the cameras has become an industry standard for law enforcement. In Santa Clara County alone, all 13 law enforcement agencies use either mobile or stationary ALPRs or a combination of. Again, having both a mobile and stationary ALPR system will allow our officers the ability to identify more suspects while impacting quality of life issues with the city, which ultimately will make Santa Clara safer. And at no time, at no time does the ALPR read and capture personal information on the driver or occupants of the vehicle. Okay, on the next slide. So you're probably asking yourself, well, how does this benefit me? How does this affect my neighborhood? How does this keep us safer? Um, let me share with you, um, with, the, with the license plate readers, we're not necessarily looking for criminals, we're looking for other things. So the stationary LPRs will allow our officers and dispatch staff to receive notifications of suspect vehicles entering a certain area of the city and provide officers the opportunity to capture criminals, criminals or deter criminal behavior before crimes are actually committed. As our officers receive these alerts in their vehicles, they can verify the information and take appropriate action, such as an enforcement stop. They can contact the person or they can access the securest database system to help identify suspects. And our stationary LPRs will be another tool to assist our personnel in impacting criminal activity, reducing crime trends and making Santa Clara a safer community. Our modern technology allows for systems to be run on solar power, electric connection, and the overall size allows them to be affixed almost anywhere without excessive infrastructure cost. And how it will station us is it will benefit our community well as a lot of crimes reported to us lack suspect information. For example, someone calls to report a crime, but we don't necessarily have that information or the, or the citizen doesn't have enough information to share for us. And we need those leads. And those leads that reduce, it, without those leads, it reduces the probability in identifying um, a suspect. And many of these crimes involve the use of vehicles and having stationary ALPRs in areas where crime trends spike will allow for the capture of license plate data to assist investigators to identify suspects. And stationary ALPRs can be a vital tool in reducing crime and making criminal think twice about targeting victims in Santa Clara. And if you see this list up here for the community benefits of the ALPR, and again, we're not just looking for stolen vehicles or crimes used in, or vehicles used in robberies. This technology also allows us to to hit plates that have amber alerts attached to them, or when loved ones go missing or driving away, people with, um, with mental health issues, or people who are experiencing such um, illnesses such as Alzheimer's, we're able to locate their cars if they're driving around in our city. Um, on the criminal aspect side, we can locate people with warrants, persons of interests, um, cars that have been reported stolen, and then um, overall, it's, it's, it's for criminal investigations. So, okay. And we'll go to the next page. So with the growing crime trends in 2019, the Santa Clara Police Department received grant funding from the Board of State 
community corrections as supported by state assembly member Kansen Chu. And this was to protect our community from the smash and grabs that's been plaguing the state of California and in our hometown of Santa Clara. And with this grant funding, we explored viable options to safeguard our community. And stationary ALPRs was just one of the proposals for that grant. If you take a look at the crime statistics for 2021 between Janice, January and August, you'll see that our numbers have not just gone up, but they spiked. Uh, our 2021 crime trends that impact the community on a regular basis are residential burglaries, robberies, commercial burglaries, auto burglaries, and vehicle thefts. And last year, our, our motor vehicle thefts between the month of January and August went up by 25.9%. Shootings, shootings, 250%. That's, I've never seen that before. That's, that number is really high. And our catalytic converter thefts from both Priuses and Hondas are 34.5%. And again, these are only, we only know these crimes if they're actually reported to us. And going back to the ALPRs, having this, the stationary ALPRs would offer our officers another tool for solving these crimes. Because as mentioned before, the majority of the time victims and witnesses do not capture the needed information to assist us in identifying suspects. In most of our case studies, a license plate is the key to solving crimes. Um, I want to share with you some of the recent cases that we've had in Santa Clara. Um, I know that we've put out press releases, but I'll just give you a little bit, um, a little bit more insight on it. And on January 1st, 2021, a shooting occurred of an unoccupied vehicle and the suspects fled in a vehicle. Um, if we had the stationary LOPRs, we would have been able to track down those license plate, the make and model of the vehicle, and really reduce the time needed for our investigations. On January 12th, 2021, during the late night hours, a vehicle struck a pedestrian in the roadway at the intersection of Flora Vista and El Camino Real. And as a result of the collision, the pedestrian um, succumbed to their injuries. The vehicle also sustained major body damage. Had we had a stationary ALPR at that location, we would have been able to track down the vehicle and possibly the driver. On August 20th, 2021, during the late night hours, which is what, last month, an attempted homicide occurred in a residential area. The suspect fled in a vehicle. Had our system been available, detectives would have had a tool, another tool for their investigation. The city, like, Every other city has been plagued with residential, commercial, and auto burglaries. And it is not uncommon for criminals to travel into our city in stolen vehicles to commit crimes. And the use of our ALPRs could potentially alert officers and prevent additional crimes from occurring. So what I'm going to show you is a very <laughs> antiquated picture, but they're still up and about. These are what the traditional cameras look like. And what they do is they require power. They re require an internet connection. Uh, it does not include installation, maintenance, and ongoing enhancements. And something like that, you can't just unmount and move. Um, again, we'd have to do all the hardware and all that stuff behind it. So, um, but what we've done, we've identified a vendor um, for, uh, for a 60-day trial, or I'm sorry, for a trial, and we will evaluate their product and determine if their product will benefit the community and our service delivery. So what I will do, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce John Anderson of Flock Safety. He's going to talk about uh, what Flock has to offer, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to him. John? Thanks, Kung, and thanks again, everyone, for, uh, for joining in the meeting today. Um, what I was planning on talking about was just a little bit of who Flock is as a company. There's some things that we've put together into our solution to really protect the privacy of the residents of your community. Uh, we all know that that's very important, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, as well as um, how this is being used and some of the results that some of the other cities in the county and in the area are able to achieve with this. Uh, so I'll just I'll jump on in. Um, Flock Safety is kind of an interesting company in that our mission, our whole purpose is to help cities eliminate crime. And 
uh, one of our fundamental principles of that is that we believe it's possible to build technology that is tremendously effective for law enforcement, while at the same time being mindful of privacy and some of the concerns that the community might have. And everything that we've designed and everything that we've built takes those types of things in mind. Um, I've just got kind of a snippet of some of the things that we do that are centered around the privacy side of things. And I'm going to highlight a couple that I think are really the most important. Um, the first aspect of that is that the footage itself is all owned by the city and only the city can decide who it's shared with. Um, my company, Flock, will never sell or share the footage and we don't even have access to it. We've also mandated that there's going to be a short retention policy uh, because that just ensures that all data that's not associated with the crime is automatically going to be taken out of the solution. Um, we've decided that there's not going to be any facial recognition as part of the solution, and it's not something that can be used for immigration enforcement or traffic enforcement. Um, and then the way that we've designed the camera technology to work, the whole purpose is to get objective information. And we've been mindful to make sure that we're doing everything we can to get objective facts about vehicles, but not the occupants of the vehicle. It's merely a lead for the police department to investigate. We've also created a transparency portal which is a public facing web page that's available for cities to use. And what this allows them to do is just make readily available some information about how the technology and how the solution uh, is being used. Um, what I've got open right here is actually Vallejo's privacy uh, transparency portal that's active and live right now. It's automatically updated from the system. And what this allows the city to do is communicate their policies really clearly and easy, easily about how the solution is used, as well as some of the analytics about its actual use. I know, Kung, do you want to say some words about what you guys are thinking in terms of this? Yeah, we, as, as you know, as residents of Santa Clara, we are, we are a very community service oriented um, agency. We believe in transparency and the power of community. And with this transparency page, this is, this is what you have real time. It is telling you exactly who has access to our cameras, what it's been used for, and how many plates it's been recording. This is a great page that Flock came up with because to meet the needs of not just law enforcement, but our needs as well. And this is with one click to a link, you're gonna have live real-time data as to how we are using our technology. Um, and a couple of the questions, or what I'm gonna kind of highlight here is some of the questions that I get asked a lot uh, about this kind of technology. And it really centers around um, how the ALPR technology actually prevents and eliminates crime. And there's a few different aspects of that. It can be both proactive as well as investigative after the fact. Um, and, and the first aspect of it is that it's tied in with the Department of Justice hot lists. So anything that's going to be a stolen or a wanted vehicle is automatically going to send off an alert to the police department. So they'll get a real-time alert when typically it's a stolen or a wanted vehicle enters the, the area where the cameras or enters into the city. And what that allows them to do is, is potentially locate that vehicle and address an issue before it really becomes an issue. The second aspect is after the fact, after a, a crime happens, the law enforcement agency, the Santa Clara Police Department, is able to use this as a tool to investigate and get leads on um, on who could potentially have committed the crime. And what we've been finding and what our clients have been finding is that as their clearance rates for investigating this, these cases increases, the crime rates that are in those areas subsequently decreases. And really, the third aspect is that um, the cameras and people knowing that the law enforcement agency is able to identify stolen vehicles and has this great investigative tool, acts as a, a deterrent. And I've got a couple of examples here that I want to highlight that that, um, that exemplifies some of those things. Uh, in Vacaville, there was a situation that happened a while back where there was a stolen vehicle that entered into the city. The police department got that alert and they were able to actually locate that vehicle as it was entering into a neighborhood. Um, they were able to locate the vehicle, 
pulled them over, made the arrest of the suspects, and they ended up finding a bunch of shaved ignition keys that were on their possession. So it was pretty clear that they were specifically going into that community to break into more vehicles and steal another vehicle. Uh, And that's really why um, stolen vehicles and wanted vehicles are a big part of the solution. It's because stolen vehicles and wanted vehicles are typically associated with some other crime. I mean, the the purpose of stealing the vehicle in the first place for a lot of people is to commit some sort of a future crime. And by being able to stop that vehicle, it makes it so that they're not able to commit that future crime. Uh, In San Marino, they're one of our agencies that did kind of a long-term case study. They've been a, a client of ours for a little over a year now. And when they hit that year mark, they went back and looked at the statistics that they had for um, lots of different types of crime. And what they found was that they were getting huge reductions in, in those types of crime. What they did is they looked and identified what they thought were the reasons for that. And both the police chief and the city council really look at that and see that their clearance rates for those crimes are, were dramatically up, which was what was causing the reduction in overall crime throughout the city. Now, in terms of the information that the cameras are able to identify, the information is really a similar type of information that an eyewitness would be able to get on a vehicle if they happen to see the vehicle or happen to be looking at an image like this. Um, Our whole goal is for that information to be as objective and unbiased as possible. So what we're looking for is, is strictly facts about the vehicle, but not people or the occupants. Um, So, I mean, an eyewitness in this case would notice that this is a a Toyota. They'd notice the license plate characters in the state. It's a sedan and it's gray. The solution is going to know similar things, but not anything about the occupants or who could potentially be driving it. So it's merely a lead uh, for the law enforcement agency to follow up on. And um, we're then able to take that information and compare it to those lists of stolen vehicles Um, allowing them to identify if it is stolen or if it is a wanted vehicle. Uh, I'm going to highlight a couple of our clients that we have here in the area just so that you can kind of get an idea of what kind of successes are possible. Um, We installed Fairfield Solution at the very beginning of July. And in the first three weeks with Flock, they were able to identify a couple of attempted murder suspects and take them into custody. Um, Someone that was impersonating an officer Um, And I mean, who knows what they were really trying to do with a ruse like that. Um, There was two suspects that were wanted for homicide, as well as a a vehicle on bicycle hit and run suspect. Uh, And what's interesting is in most of these cases, if it wasn't for the ALPR technology, they wouldn't have even had a single lead to investigate on. Um, They've got a good case study for a catalytic converter theft that they were able to solve. There was actually an eyewitness that witnessed this theft, um, the catalytic converter theft happening a couple weeks ago. So they wrote down the license plate and a description of the vehicle. They called it into Fairfield PD. And what they were able to do is put this on a custom hot list that they made um, so that they would get an alert if that vehicle continued driving around town, which it did. And about an hour later, so basically in real time, they were able to locate this vehicle that was uh, in town committing catalytic converter thefts and um, pull them over and make the arrest. So, I mean, here were the tools that they had in the vehicle. So it's put pretty clear that they fully intended to do more of these thefts. Um, so ultimately saving some future people from the headache of having to fix their vehicle. Uh, Morgan Hill is uh, another one of our clients here in Santa Clara County. And um, they actually just recently got their solution installed. And after about two weeks, they were able to recover nine stolen vehicles, which resulted in about 13 or 14 arrests. Um, All of the occupants had warrants or burglary tools, shaved ignition keys, and other things that just made it pretty clear that they were um, coming to town specifically to commit crimes. But one thing that I think is really interesting about this is that they looked back at some of their historical data and uh, identified that it typically takes them about eight months to locate the same number of stolen vehicles that they were able to find in about two weeks. And what I think is interesting about that is there's probably the same number of these stolen vehicles and wanted vehicles driving through town 
it was just before they'd come into town and commit their crimes and then leave. But now they've got a way to actually identify that it's happening, potentially locate the vehicles, and then stop those future crimes from happening. Dan Ramon has kind of a, a similar story there. They were actually with one of our competitors, but when they switched to Flock, they were um, they saw a similar increase in an ability to locate stolen vehicles. And one of the things that they had noticed is just like I was mentioning before about why stolen vehicles are are important was that most of the time with these vehicles, they're able to recover stolen property or burglary tools um, and some other things just that would um, stop these people from committing these future crimes um, moving forward. Well, Kung, I want you uh, to take back over. And, and John is being a little humble there because there's a lot more success stories with this that we can spend four weeks on and you'd be overwhelmed with how, how amazing this technology has been. Um, there was a yep. question in the chat room that says, could this technology be used to identify cars associated with undocumented individuals? And the answer is no. And nor do we nor do we share any information for immigration purposes. So I hope I was able to answer that question. So one of the key things with tonight is kind of looking over our policy. If you look in the chat room, I, I dropped a draft of the policy. Um, this is going to be going to council. It's already been reviewed by city attorney's office and it's going to go to city council for adoption. Um, we can, it's not too long, but it can get a little um, confusing at times to read, but I just wanted to kind of break it down to make it a little bit easier to understand. And this policy will, will cover both our mobile and stationary LPRs. So the purpose of our uh, policy is to hold the department accountable keyword accountable and provide guidance to for the capture, storage, use of the system, the data, and protecting privacy rights. The, the ALPR may be used in conjunction with any routine patrol operation, criminal investigation, canvassing area, canvassing areas such as homicide scenes, shootings, or other major incidents. The ALPR data may contain confidential information and sometimes an image of the occupant, and the department understands the importance of the established privacy rights of the public, and these ALPRs are only used in public right-of-ways and areas the police have a right to be, but they will not be used for the sole purpose of monitoring individual activities. Additionally, in accordance with the California Values Act, the ALPR data may not be used for the purposes of immigration enforcement or similar crimes. Let me repeat that. The data may not be used for the purposes of immigration enforcement or similar crimes. No department personnel shall access the data unless authorized to do so for an official investigation. We have a very simple saying, need to know, right to know. And if it doesn't meet both prongs of that equation, then you, you're not gonna be using this technology. The Administrative Services Division Commander which would be Assistant Chief Waheed Kazem, who's in the room. <laughs> Arthur Desini will be responsible for training, assuring compliance to privacy laws and access, and retention and destruction of data. And Flock currently retains the data for 30 days, and it is then purged, unless it becomes, or we believe, it will become evidence in a criminal civil trial or is subject to a discovery request or other lawful action to produce records. No member of the department shall operate ALPR equipment or access the data without completing department training. ALPR data, data is safeguarded and protected by both procedural and technological means. Um, but this flock system is amazing. It has a system audit um, ability. And then we're also going to be, there will be external audits by the Administrative Service Division Commander or their designee to make sure to make sure our staff adhere to our policy. Uh, moreover, once finally approved and adopted by council, our policy will be conspicuously posted on our website at santaclaraca.gov in accordance with state law. So I know I said a lot of stuff. Um, what it comes down to, we will train our people. Um, they will be held accountable. They will have to enter a case number for them to, to do a search of the data. And there has to be a reason. 
And at the tail end of it, there's going to be somebody who's going to be doing monthly audits to ensure that people aren't looking up um, prohibited information or informational for personal gain. Right. So again, the, the, the draft of the policy is in the chat box. Feel free to take a look at it. And again, it's going to go to council for adoption unless they have questions. And then we will publish it on our website once we go live. Okay. And on our next slide. So our deployment, deployment plan. We've had to look at this several times because crime trends, they shift, they change, they migrate. There's displacement and so forth. So one of the ones that for sure we're going to use is the Mercado and the Mission College area. For those who are um, familiar with the area, historically, the area, the area, this area has experienced a significant amount of vehicle burglaries. Like many other cities in the state, one of our priorities is to reduce the number of vehicle burglaries. And having this block camera system installed would help alert us to possible suspects and, uh, and assist us with investigations. Another benefit to the flock system and would deter street racing and sideshows, which are becoming much, much more common in the Bay Area. And if you look at that map, if you're familiar with uh, the Mercado area, there's pretty much only one way in, one way out for Santa Clara and the other area, the other location exits into Sunnyvale. But what we've seen in the past is there's, they're mostly, if not the majority, of the people coming into vehicle burglaries and committing crimes in this specific area, most of them, if not all, are not Santa Clara residents. They're not. They come in, they see a movie theater knowing that the occupants are going to be in for the next three hours, and they see this as a crime of opportunity. So if we can stop this from happening or prevent it or even just lower the rates a little bit, I, I think that's a success. And our next slide, we're going to look at um, another area, and it's going to be... so. We're going to have 12, initially in this trial stage, we're going to have 12 um, cameras. Two of those are dedicated to the Mercado and the Mission College area for the aforementioned reasons um, I just spoke of. And then we're also just proposing um, 10 other cameras at the Halford Lawrence Camino, um, or I'm sorry, Lawrence Expressway corridor. Um, what we're thinking about is every ingress point into the city. So if there's an outsider coming into Santa Clara, we're going to be able to capture the date or capture their license plate and alert the officers. Um, also, for those that live in this part of the town or the city, they know that Safeway on Saturday nights, there's congregation of the street racers there. And if we can capture the data, the, the plates, and even deter them from coming to that area, that's a victory in itself. Okay. Uh, let's see. So here is the next one. Uh, the next one is we, this was just done last week. Uh, we have a full-time crime analyst and our detective bureau. Uh, we had to ask ourselves, what is the priorities in regards to crime trends and person's crime will always be number one, but in agreement, unanimously, we all know that crimes are committed. Usually if not 99.9%, .9 with the use of a vehicle. So one of the proposal here is over on, um, I'm gonna read, I know the picture's a little small to see, but it's it's the Monroe and Scott corridor to Los Padres and El Camino Royale to capture that portion of the city. Uh, we've had some of the more violent crimes in that area, and we'd like to, to deter it or even stop it from happening. So having the flock system is gonna give us an amazing opportunity to to investigate these crimes or even prevent them from happening, okay? I see some chat boxes or some questions in the chat box. We'll get to them in the question section. Um, so here are some of the agencies that are using both the stationary and mobile ALPRs. And what I didn't, what I should tell you or qualify is in Santa Clara, we have six beats in our city. We have the city, it's spread into six beats. On day shift or swing shift, we can have up to 12 officers. In the middle of the night, we may have six or seven for the entire city. And if we get one call, one DUI crash, or one missing person, that wipes out our entire uh, patrol division for one call. If we were able to put these cameras, these, these are like force multipliers. We don't feed them. We don't have to take care of them. We don't give them benefits. 
we just stand them on a corner and they just do their job with it and they, and they don't complain, which isn't the best part, right? So um, having these, this system is going to be a force multiplier for our department. It's going to help our community safer. It's going to make our officers be more proactive to stop crime from happening. And these agencies, if you can see, they agree. I live in Morgan Hill. They had a community meeting. They put this up um, where they're going to plot their cameras. And I will tell you, uh, I absolutely, from being a res Morgan Hill resident, I absolutely love the idea. There's one actually on my street that I don't even, I saw them install it, and, but it's so um, small that you can't even tell that it's a camera. You wouldn't know if you drove past it, you wouldn't know. But our neighbors at Campbell, Gilroy, Los Altos, Morgan Hill, Mountain View, Palo Alto, San Jose, the Sheriff's Office, Sunnyvale, um, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, Antioch PD, BART, which is coming to our town in a few years, uh, Highway Patrol, Daly City, Fremont, Oakland, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, and Vallejo, just to name a few. That is not an exhaustive list, but you can just see the value in it with all these departments utilizing this technology. And before we go to the questions, I just saw on the next slide, what we wanted to, what our big goal for this one is, um, John, you want to go to the next slide? John? <coughs> This is the most important slide um, for today. If we can, if you're coming in late, or if there's certain things that you just have a little bit of doubt about, this should be in a nutshell what our presentation, our town hall meeting's about. Simply, what is this technology? It is a license plate recognition. It gathers objective evidence and facts about vehicles, um, not people. It alerts police of wanted criminals of, of vehicles. It's used to solve crime and it adheres to all state laws. What it isn't, what it doesn't do is not a facial recognition program. It is not tied to personal inf information identification. It is not used for immigration nor traffic enforcement, which means, you know, if you drive through a neighborhood with this camera, you're not gonna get a ticket in the mail saying you ran a red light. This is not what this technology is designed for. And again, most importantly, we are not sharing or selling our information for immigration investigations. Um, and that the data automatically deletes every 30 days unless there is a specific request for discovery. Um, basically, if somebody is asking to retain the data, whether it's the public defender's office or our investigators. But these are the most important things. If you don't get anything from us today in this virtual town meeting, these are the keys to, or this, these are the primary factors and our goal and objectives with using this technology. All right, so um, this is gonna conclude my presentation of our current ALPR system and how our stationary ALPRs will benefit the community again we want to make sure we are addressing any concerns and collaborating with the community, community regarding the use of ALPRs. And now that you have heard of present, our presentation on the use of ALPRs and our policy, is there any concerns or anything you should be added to our policy? And at this time, we would love to open this up for um, questions. Um, so what we can do, we can either answer the questions in the chat box, or you can raise your hand, um, raise your hand and we'll recognize you and we'll take you off mute. Um, LT, LT I know there was one last question from okay. BJ about um, if there's an incentive for flock, um, if crimes are solved. So is there, is there, I'm sorry, is there a benefit or like a financial benefit to it? Yeah, that was the question. So, oh, say so, BJ. No, absolutely not. We have a fixed price. Um, we have a fixed price for it. Um, feast or famine, we get what we get. So, the answer to that: there is no financial incentives if if we solve crime or we reduce our crime rate. There's none whatsoever. It's a fixed flat rate. Okay. Any other? I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. And Lieutenant, there was actually one more question in the chat. Okay. Um, it was from uh, BJ. Mm -hmm. So if a crime in an area, so if there's a crime in an area, all flock data for that time frame may be retained indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
so I guess the question is basically about the criteria in which you would consider um, data associated with the crime to retain. Uh, one of the another question is from Council Member Suds Jane. Council Member, welcome. Uh, the question is: Don't we already have mobile ALPR in some cars and stationary at Levi Stadium? Our mobile ALPRs are yes, as, as said in the meeting, we have four of them that are mounted to our vehicles, and I believe that the the I may not be one hundred percent with this. I may have to get back to you. But Levi Stadium is also exploring of expanding the flock system to to that area as well. Um, what's the overall cost, both initial and ongoing? John, will you want to um, just explain the cost per camera? Yeah, um, our our pricing is really pretty pretty straightforward and pretty simple. It's twenty five hundred per camera per year. It's a subscription model. There's a one time two hundred fifty dollar installation, but that's all inclusive. So there really aren't going to be any surprises for the city. So the first year ends up being thirty three thousand for the twelve cameras, and then the ongoing would be thirty thousand. Um, but again, that's a, a subscription model, and it's all inclusive. So it includes the camera technology itself, all of the software unlimited licenses for the, the police department, uh, their users to log in, as well as all ongoing maintenance and support is included. And again, if you just kind of think about the, like, as I spoke a little bit earlier about the force amplifier, force multiplier, um, a $250 investment for, I will tell you, when we do our community meetings, every community asks us, hey, can we put an officer or can we have an officer patrol that area? Can we have more patrol? The answer is yes, but we can only do so much for every community. So having one of these at the price of $250 for initial install is a, it's a bargain. I'm telling you, it's a bargain. But just to, to make sure that everyone understands that we're just doing a trial with it, with Flock. Uh, we're going to use empirical data to see if this is working for our community or not. And based on empirical data and hard statistics and crime stats, we're going to make a more educated decision if we want to expand this program after the conclusion of, of our of our trial period. Um, another question that we're getting in the chat room from Team Doucet, hope I said that correctly, Doucet, um, how will results of the camera placement be reported to the community? I will promise you that once we decide where it goes that we will post it publicly on our website, all right? It's and and we'll do it before we even um, install anything. It's it's important that we have that transparency and that the community knows exactly where they're going to be going at. Okay. Uh, the question is another question is, and I love these questions because these are questions my wife asked me uh, before I had this town hall meeting. Uh, will the data be public? Uh, the data will be captured on that transfer transparency page that John was talking to you about. There's certain things that we can't disclose, such as the actual license plate numbers, but the data that we can share with you are the actual reads and, and how it's being used and how it's being shared, like that transparency page that um, John mentioned a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. Does anyone have questions um, in the chat room? Taylor, did I miss any questions, Taylor, the, in the chat box? Uh, I believe he just asked, uh, BJ just asked a follow-up question about the data that will be used uh, in the pilot phase of this program. And that's an excellent question. We have a full-time crime, crime analyst, and I will tell you, I she is amazing. She makes, uh, she makes all these numbers tangible, realistic, and she breaks it down. Absolutely, we're going to measure the success of this because data is only good if it's being measured and evaluated. So absolutely. And, and the data and the data that we're gonna, the benchmarks that we'll be using for that is obviously vehicle thefts, violent crimes, commercial burglary robberies, plus um, the number of arrests that are associated with this technology. This, um, so the other, so the other one where we're capturing between Scott Monroe from El Camino to Los Padres, where you don't see the uh, two additional cameras on there, uh, because it was really hard to capture that without having to squint. Uh, we're putting one on Lafayette. Well, we're proposing 
<laughs> proposing to put one on Lafayette and El Camino. And we're also proposing to put one on Lafayette and Richard near the Home Depot. Um, all the Home Depots in the Bay Area, not just specific to Santa Clara, they're, begin they're being plagued with um, commercial thefts, power tools, vehicles, everything. And it's also one of the main corridors into our northern um, part of Santa Clara where they do um, the sideshows. Lafayette is straight, it's long, and it's, it can be considered a race strip for those who, are, who may be enticed to do um, street racing. So we want to strategically place um, two cameras there as well. And hopefully, hopefully this is a huge success with this program and we love to expand it to even other parts of the city as well. So again, just, just so you know, we've been using this technology for like close to, I want to say over 15 years. Um, the best way to describe this is, you know, when I when I was growing up, I had a VHS. Five years later, it came out with laser disc with those discs were about this big and they, they were really heavy to carry. Then we went to VCR tapes and then DVD and now it's streaming. And we're talking about two decades of technology that has changed. So imagine the technology be between the first um, LPR readers and the technology now, what we're doing basically is updating our technology. This isn't new technology, we're just updating it, making it more environmental friendly by making it solar powered and also with, um, with the Wi-Fi connections too. It's gonna be fast, it's gonna be real time, it's gonna be accessible. And again, it, it is a force multiplier for our department. Do we have any questions, any additional concerns or comments? Or does anyone have any success stories with, um, with, with the system? Let me, share, let me share one success story that we had during COVID. One of our officers was driving our patrol mounted um, ALPRs, driving around in the area of, I want to say, um, yeah, Memorex and Space Park over there, kind of an industrial area if you've been to Athena's Grill. This is, it's a very commercial area. He's driving, he gets a hit on his computer and it says, hey, lost, lost stolen car. So he goes, pulls over to the side, watches the car. He calls in and he verifies that this car is still stolen and then he takes action. And when I say action, he just goes to see one, if it's occupied and two, if there's anyone in there, right? If it's safe to recover. So we recover the car, which means we find it, we contact the owner, we remove it from the hot list. And so this car is no longer considered stolen. And the poor lady came, her daughter drove her to um, over there at Dina's Grill, and she just started breaking down in tears. And all she says was, COVID destroyed me. I lost my job. All I had was everything in my vehicle. This is the first time in my life that I experienced, experienced homelessness. And thank you guys for finding my car. Thank you. And she got in her car and she drove away. Her daughter broke down in tears saying, this is the toughest times we've ever had. And if you guys had not stolen her, not stolen, we had not found her vehicle, we don't know what we would have done because her whole life was put into the trunk of a tiny little Honda Civic. And that's through technology. This is something, if, if I was just driving on my patrol vehicle and I wasn't actively entering license plate numbers into my computer, of course, while not driving, I wouldn't have found that car. I would not have made this lady's um, quality of life. I would not have been able to improve her quality of life. When we introduced like the mobile, the mobile, like the ones we have now or the stationary ones, it takes the guesswork out of everything. I don't have to type anything. I don't have to look. Our officers can pay attention looking straight on the road rather than look at our computer and try to drive at the same time while entering license plate. This takes the guesswork out of everything. And it, and it just constantly feeds data and it, and it alerts us nonstop when these cars pop up. And again, these are success stories. We don't always find a car with the, with the thief in it. We don't always find a car with a murder suspect. But what we did on this one is we found a lady her home. We found her her home. And we gave it back to her all in one piece. And just that the thank that she gave us and just the, the appreciation she had for us finding it and giving it back to her 
was absolutely overwhelming, especially during the time of COVID when it was so difficult. But those are the very small success stories that aren't related to crime. These are the ones that hit us at home. These are the ones that will affect us, your neighbor, your your daughters when their cars get stolen or something gets reported. These are the small victories that we want to celebrate and not necessarily always catching the homicide suspect. So, um, all right, I'm going to look through the chat box again. And uh, it's seven o'clock. Does anyone else have any additional questions or comments or concerns or anyone would like to share any success stories or, or any worries? Or more importantly, I want to know if we were, um, if we covered every topic that you needed as a community wanted to know about, because we don't have secrets here. We don't. So if there's anything else that we can share with you, we would be more than willing to share. Because the success of this begins at home and you're as a community, we need your support. We need your support to survive. And if there's anything differently or something else that, that you can suggest, we're, this is why we're here for. Okay. Thank you, Jackson. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Well, it's oh, um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Councilmember Watanabe had a question. Oh, okay. So from Councilmember Watanabe, will this be used in addition to the video from residential cameras? So these, yes, um, it's a tool to answer the council members question. It's a tool. We use this for investigative, it's an investigative tool, just like the ring cameras our camera registry program, um, our nine, our anonymous tip hotline. It's just another tool that we use. Like the best way I explained this to my family was a carpenter doesn't always have a hammer. He has a ruler. He has a pencil. He has all sorts of tools. This is just another tool in our toolbox to help us reduce overall crime. But um, they're separate entities, but we use them to achieve our end game, which is to solve crimes and to reduce crime council member. And I'll add one. Oh, I just like to add one brief point to that before you finish on that topic, if you don't mind. Um, they actually work really well in conjunction with the residential cameras as well, because oftentimes with a residential camera or a ring ring doorbell camera, something like that, you're able to see an image of the vehicle, but there's not that license plate on there. And this allows them to get an idea of what the vehicle looks like and then identify the license plate that's associated with it. So they work really well as a pair. Cool. So, council member, I hope we answered your question there. Oh, and LT, I just want to, since I do all these crime prevention meetings, uh, just to kind of piggyback off what John said about just prevention of crimes. Um, once the person gets, like, people, criminals start getting caught with this system, the word gets out. And that's where you actually see, like, the reduction in crime because the criminal, their creatures are habit, just like everyone else. Uh, we're all creatures of habit and they don't they'll go back to the same neighborhood to commit car burglaries. But if they get caught, they're like, ah, I got caught by this camera system. That's right down the street. I'm not going to this neighborhood. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's Words, a deterrent it's, big time. From, from in the chat box from Dave, it's not a question, but it's a statement. I think we can all relate, relate. Glad this is cost effective. And some people's Comcast monthly bills are about the same as the flock system. <laughs> that's pretty funny, but, uh, yes. Cut the cord. That's all I can say. But uh, all righty. All right. If we don't have any other um, questions and um, anything else, uh, we're going to conclude tonight's town hall event. Um, very, uh, I love it. There is, there's a great questions in there. There's a great attendance. Um, my email address is going to be here. That's me. That's how you spell my name. And that's my email address. So please feel free to contact me and uh, I'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions, okay? But on that note, um, I'd like to say thank you from the city or the police department for spending your Monday night with us. Um, Taylor, I say good night from Taylor too. And John, John, thanks for making yourself available and being a part of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you everyone as well. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, have a great night and we'll see everyone soon. All right. Take care.